All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Jess McDonald. I'm a manager with the International Programs of the Edison Electric Institute, and I'm going to give a brief introduction before we move into today's presentation. So first of all, I wanted to thank you all for joining today's webinar. The webinar today is titled, How to Align Performance Indicators to Your Organization's Strategy. Our speakers include Hassan Al-Assad. He is with the GCC and our Connection Authority, and Lawrence Jones, who's the Vice President for International Programs at the Edison Electric Institute. And so to kick things off, I wanted to cover some upcoming events and some housekeeping items. So just so you're all aware, we have two upcoming events in November. The first is with Fortis and Energy Impact Partners on November 13th, and the second is on environmental, social, and governance reporting, and EEI recently released ESG template, and that is going to be on November 20th. And so you can register for both of these webinars through the links provided in our monthly newsletter, or you can visit our website, which is at www.eei.org slash international. And just so you know, there will be an opportunity for Q&A at the end of today's presentation. You can submit questions using the chat feature, which is actually located on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, and you can submit the questions throughout the course of the presentation, and we'll have about 20 minutes for Q&A at the end. And just very importantly, this webinar is being recorded, and the recording will be posted on our YouTube channel. And if you are not receiving our monthly newsletter, you can again email us at international at eei.org um, to start receiving some important updates and news from the international programs. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic to Lawrence Jones, who is our VP for international programs at EEI, and he is going to introduce our speaker for today. So Lawrence, I'm passing it off to you. Thank you, Jessica, and once again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Uh, we are certainly delighted to be um, having this webinar uh, with our partner, uh, GCCIA, uh, and our friend Hassan al Azad, who will do the presentation. As you all know, our industry is going through a, a time of transition, a, a time of uh, certainly very uh, interesting set of opportunities are popping up all over our industry. Uh, but also, with those opportunities, we also see uh, increasing number of challenges from different areas. And whether or not these challenges and opportunities, how they evolve, one thing that is definitely important is that utilities around the world have to almost always maintain a very uh, high level of uh, productivity, as obviously because keeping the lights on is our number one priority as an industry. And so the performance of utilities is something that we think is extremely important, and this is an area that the EI and our international partners and utilities pay very close attention to. So we're always looking for new ideas around how to improve productivity. And one of the ways to really look at productivity is to be able to measure it by looking at new kinds of metrics and, and KPIs. And so making sure that these KPIs fit into your strategy is something that a lot of utilities, utilities around the world wrestle with. And today, we're delighted to have uh, uh, Hassan uh, giving the presentation, sharing the perspectives from GCCIA, which is the Gulf Corporation Council Interconnection Authority, and sharing his perspectives and their experience in terms of aligning KPIs uh, as a tool for making sure it's in, in line with their strategy as an organization. Uh, briefly, a few words about Hassan before I hand it over to him for his presentation. Uh, he is in charge of the strategy and business development at GCCIA. Um, he holds a, a BSc from the University of Manitoba and an MBA from the uh, Sheffield Halam University in the UK. Uh, he's a certified strategist and obviously he's been involved in numerous workshops and conferences where he's shared the successes of GCCI in formulating and implementing their long-term strategy. And he just recently released a paper which I would highly recommend each of you is the uh, title, Implementing Strategy and Its Effect on Corporate Culture. So uh, without further ado, uh, Hassan, over to you, and we look forward to your presentation. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, good day, good evening, uh, good morning to everybody around the world. Uh, thank you all very much, and very much thanks to the Edison uh, Electric Institute 
for uh, hosting my uh, presentation to you today. Um, pretty much what I'm going to be discussing is several matters concerning uh, our uh, strategy and alignment and uh, GCCI's experience in particular on how we were able to successfully formulate and implement our strategy and uh, follow up on our performance uh, uh, since 2012. As you can see here on the agenda, I'll just quickly go through it, is that we're going to be starting quickly, just briefly, on introduction of the balanced scorecard methodology, which I'm sure a lot of you are already well aware of what the balanced scorecard is. And then I'll be going in and talking a bit about, excuse me, about cascading strategy through culture and how culture has a severe effect and importance, plays an important role in, in, in strategy and, and, uh, and implementing strategy in an organization. And then I'll be referring, going back on, talking about uh, the strategy cascading process and what we actually did at GCCIA, taking that as a case study on how we actually cascaded objectives and KPIs from corporate to functional level. And then I'll be showing you live uh, example, uh, examples, actual examples from GCCI's corporate and department plans on how we actually managed to use by using the balance scorecard in actually cascading the strategy down to the, uh, not to the individual level, I'm sorry, to the functional level. And then I'll show you also examples of cascading uh, KPIs and how they are interlinked from uh, functional KPIs to corporate KPIs and then we'll end up with the Q&A. Uh, the learning objectives, what I hope to, to be able to get out of this presentation is understanding how to develop scorecards, and at corporate and department levels, acknowledge the effects of strategy and implementation on culture, and how to cascade strategy and KPIs throughout the organization. Now, of course, I will not go down to the individual level. This will be just up to the functional level or department level, as some other people like to uh, call it. And uh, share insights from success stories of G from the GCC Intervention Authority, actual live uh, plans, department plans, is what I'll be sharing there. This is a, uh, a saying from Peter Singe. I'm sure you must have heard of him. The author of the fifth discipline is very interesting. That alignment is the, ne is the necessary condition to empower teams in an organization. I thought of just putting there, sharing it, because alignment is really the vital pillars of success in, in, uh, in having a successful strategy. Without having alignment, and what I mean here is by from the corporate level all the way down to the individual and vice versa, you will not have a successful strategy at all. Now coming to the introduction of the balanced scorecard methodology. Here I've got a slide here which I just wish to share with you about the barriers of implementing strategy and, 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 how, and how this problem, why a lot of organizations have been facing problems in executing their strategy. And according to a study by Deloitte, uh, they say that 10% of all organizations only execute their strategy. And the reason for that is because of the barriers, the four barriers that you see in front of you, the very vision barrier where only 5% of workforce understands the strategy. And then you have the people barrier where 25% of managers have incentives linked to strategy. And then the management barrier, which I think is a very critical one, is that 85% of executives only spend less than an hour per month on discussing strategy. And then, of course, you have your resource barrier, which is where it says 60% of organizations don't even link best budgets to strategies. So these are things that you might want to kind of think of. And I thought of sharing it with you because, I mean, companies don't really realize why their strategy has failed, but really these are things that really have actually added towards that. What we have here, of course, is the balanced scorecard. I'm sure a lot of you are performance managers and are very well aware of this, and I thought of just quickly sharing it for those that maybe are, little, are new to it. A balanced scorecard really is a strategic planning and management system tool, really. And it revolves, revolves around four perspectives, as you can see, the financial, customer, process, and learning and growth, or in other terms, some people, other, other companies call it human capital. Other companies may have more than four perspectives. Some may have six, I my eight, but usually the common ones are four, which you see in front of you here. And in any organization, these, these are, are you know, used to align business. I mean, a balanced scorecard is used to align business activities to the vision and mission and strategy of an organization. It's used to improve internal and external communication within the organization and, and beyond, and also monitor organization performance against 
strategic goals. And probably what you'll be seeing throughout the, org, uh, the presentation, you'll see is how we were able to actually come up with our strategy at GC Interconnection Authority, and you will see how our actual, our, our corporate and department strategies and plans are all based on the foul scorecard, which is based on the four perspectives. We did not use anything more, just the four perspectives. Now on this slide here is what we have here, I thought of sharing is the theory behind the scorecard. Now what you might see here is something very similar to what we call maybe a value flow analysis where you see that various, what I've used here, various actual uh, corporate objectives that have been used in order to feed and reach up to our final outcome, which is our vision. And our vision of GCI is interconnected in our world. And I do have a slide specific for that to explain to you how we came to that uh, mission statement. However, at the very below here, as you can see, we have one of the inputs where, of course, when I mentioned to you about the value flow analysis, it, value flow analysis consists of something called a, a series of inputs, processes, which, lead, which results in outputs and eventually outcomes. So this is what we actually used in, in just as, as, a, as an example from the, taken from balance scorecard, various objectives from our balance scorecard, from our corporate strategy, I should say, based on the balance scorecard and coming up and how to see the vision. So you can see from the very bottom here in the input, uh, one of our actual uh, financial uh, objectives has been used as an input, which is fund future growth plans in electricity trading, telecom, and consultancy. And another input that we've used was the position of human capital as a strategic partner, which of course uh, focuses more on hiring the right uh, personnel and talent in order to work on, on, on such objectives. And the output for that would be continuously enhancing uh, collaboration between the Gulf Population Council utilities and fostering best practices, eventually leading to two outcomes, expand the volume of electricity trading within the Gulf region, eventually leading to interconnecting our world. Another thing about Aligning the and cascading alignment through the, I mean, sorry about strategic alignment uh, via cascading down scorecard. Here's just a very simple example here again, which kind of like resembles the previous slide here, where you can see the organization level uh, balance scorecard, which has strategic objectives and measures, are then cascaded down to department and level and, and, depart and section level or team level, and then eventually down to the individual level. Now, in our, example, in our presentation here, I will be showing you live examples of how it's been cascaded all the way down from organizational to department level only. But a good example that used at GCCIA was some of the objectives and measures will be used throughout the organization and appear on every scorecard, such as number of fatal injuries is a good example uh, as, an, as a KPI that's been cascaded. We usually call those as drill downs, and I'll be showing, describe, describing those to you in more detail as we move along. Here's another good example here, as you can see here from the corporate scorecard. We have, of course, from the perspective, which is the financial perspective, the objective that that's actually uh, part of the financial perspective was maximize returns from all services, and thereby we created a measure to, to measure that, protect, to see, uh, measure the performance on that particular objective, which is percentage of total optimization in operational expended, uh, expended, expen uh, expenses. And the target was 4% or more in terms of reduction of costs, I mean, in savings, basically. Uh, now, of course, being at the corporate level, uh, at GCCIA, this would be uh, considered as uh, management would have to, of course, in coordination with all the departments, they would work in coming up and proposing such uh, a target and thereby propose, and then uh, submitting it to the board for their review and ratification. So this is actually eventually approved by, the, by our board of directors. Now, once that's done, we then go down to the departments and we then create, uh, identify or create objectives that would actually be cascaded from the corporate objective, as you can see, maximize returns from all services. We then created an objective, which is pretty much standard to all functions at GCCI, which is maintain savings and all budget expenses. 
And for that, we created a measure, which is percentage savings on approved budget. And again, it's set at 4%. So you can see how it's well cascaded in this case. Now, this case is just using an example where we, we, we changed the objective and we changed the, the, the title, maybe the text in terms of the, uh, of the KPI from the corporate one to the, uh, to the department one. But we do have examples where the exact same measure such as number of fatal injuries, is used on both the corporate and individual levels. Just so I thought maybe sharing with you about the benefits of having, uh, I think I made a mistake here about having done uh, mention only department, but not, not only department, it's also individual level strategies. And I can, it's quite clear here about, in terms of having the benefits, um, on an organizational level, of course, it increases adaptability and enhances focus and clarity for purpose. So when you have everything very clear from the organization level, it makes it very easy from the department and individual level to go down and understand the strategy. On the department level, of course, it improves corporate performance because once the departments understand what the corporation wants, then they'll be able then to achieve what the corporation wants. And of course, it will enhance coordination between departments and within the department itself. And then coming down, of course, to the individual, which drives accountability, is that, of course, by cascading goals all the way down to the individual levels, the accountability from strategy to daily execution occurs. And eventually, performance will be directly traceable to progress all the way down to the individual level. Now, I'm going to be going into cascading strategy through culture, and here we're going to be starting here. I'm sure you must have also uh, heard about Peter Drucker and, um, about, to, about his saying, saying that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Um, I, I tend to agree with him, definitely. I mean, culture is, is a very, very, very uh, vital aspect of, uh, of, of, of an organization. And of course, it is an essential factor in, in the success of implementing a strategy in any organization, whether it's in utilities or in, 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 in any type of business, really. Now, I personally have left this as an audience participation about what does Peter mean by this. So maybe we can probably think about this as we move through the presentation. And when we reach about Q&A, maybe we can have some questions come up or comments and we can discuss this. Another interesting uh, uh, <coughs> diagram here that we have from uh, Corbett Rick who actually was able to identify the, the interlinking or the interlinkage between strategy and culture and how they are very much intertwined with each other and, de and highly dependent on each other at the same time. Without one, the other will not exist. And really, they, they, are, they are coexistent at the same time. And, and it's very essential that both of them are actually uh, strategically aligned in order to be able to have a, a successful strategy implemented at any organization. Now, what he's mentioned here is that strategy is really what, it's, what we say, and culture is what we do. And if you can see at the diagram here on the right side, it's, it's clearly mentioned here that strategy and culture are, 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 are interlinked. And in the strategy, the goals that need to be uh, defined in the, in the strategy need to be very much interlinked with the values in one's organization. Now, of course, you're all aware that in all organizations there are values that are that have been stated, like you know, like safety, sustainability, efficiency, innovation. These are all type of values that you would have. So, in order to have a strategy, you need to make sure that the culture is there to be able to support it at the same time. Same thing goes down on when you go down to the objectives level in the strategy. You want to make sure that the right practices are actually being implemented in order to achieve those objectives. And then going down further, when you come down to the activities, or maybe you want to call them initiatives or action plans, you want to have make sure that the behavior of the people that are going to be working on those activities are in line and supporting at the same time. I tend to think of it as culture being more of, or maybe if you want to look at this uh, diagram, I like to look at it in a different way. Like look at it as a landscape, really, was where you see a terrain and then you want to actually have a pathway. You want to ensure that you have a, a create, develop a pathway that will go through this terrain. But in order, before you do that, you want to actually understand the type of terrain. So in this case, you would want to understand the type of organization you're dealing with. Is it a resistant organization? Is it an organization that would not accept the strategy or something? So 
So these are very important issues. You don't want to create a strategy and then enforce it on people who would resist it and then eventually, eventually end up being a, a total failure. So these are the things of how important culture plays in the formulation of strategy. I'm not coming here about the, strat the cascading process that we actually used at uh, GCCIA. That's short for the GCC Interconnection Authority. And I will be giving you a short uh, description in, in, in the next few slides about, uh, about uh, the Gulf Cooperation Council Interconnection Authority. Um, what we have here is GCCIA, and also known as Gulf Cooperation Council Interconnection Authority, as Lawrence has just mentioned to you as well, was formed by royal decree in the year 2001. And in 2002, hiring commenced. Uh, it's owned by the six GCC countries, or commonly known maybe as the Persian Gulf Arab states, uh, uh, and it's all authorized by authorized share capital of 1.1 billion U.S. dollars, divided into 1.1 well, 1 million 100,000 shares of 1,000 dollars each. Uh, Saudi Arabia with the biggest share, followed by Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Bahrain, and Oman. Uh, the authority is managed by a board of directors consisting of 12 members, of course, two members representing each member state. And the chairmanship of the board of directors is rotated is every is rotated between every member state every three years. The current membership is with Bahrain right now. Uh, the authority's uh, main headquarters is located in the city of Dammam. Saudi Arabia, which is very close to Bahrain, uh, on the uh, place uh, right located on the Arabian Gulf or the Persian Gulf, whatever you want to call it. And the control center is also located at the main headquarters for the. It's the inter, it's a regional uh, control center, which uh, collaborates with all the control main control centers of each of the member states. Now the purpose of the uh, I'll, I'll just kind of summarize the purpose of the. Uh, of the formation of the GCC Interconnection Authority was to link up the power grids of the six states, operate and maintain the interconnection grid, and become a major player in regional electricity trading market. What you see here is a geographical map of our power grid. Um, it was designed in three phases. The first phase was completed in 2009 and inaugurated in Kuwait, where all the heads of state attended. It connects Kuwait with Saudi Arabia, the eastern uh, province of Saudi Arabia, and Bahrain with a um, submarine cable and with Qatar. And of course, most of it is on overhead transmission lines, with the exception of the interlink with Bahrain, which is submarine cable. That's the phase one. The phase two it was basically we weren't involved, but however, it was considered as part of this overall interconnection where. It was the interlinking of all the independent power systems in the United Arab Emirates together and the northern part of Oman. So you can see it there marked in blue. Now, we were not in, uh, per, uh, involved in charge of that. However, uh, it, it is, as I said, considered as part of the overall uh, power grid of the GCC. And phase three, which we were involved, was linking the phase two with phase one. And now, right now, as we speak, the entire grid is, is interlinked, and uh, Oman, the United Arab Emirates, and the other states are all linked, and power trade is actually existing as well. Emergency support is being provided uh, at all times. The single line diagram, this will probably be interesting for all engineers here, shows exactly how and what consists of the power grid. I won't go into much detail, but it just explains to you about the distances between all the substations uh, located that, that form part of the power grid. Um, you can see here, um, there are, the, the power grid is based on a 50, mega, uh, 50 hertz uh, frequency based on the British system. However, Saudi Arabia is based on the American system, which is a 60 hertz uh, frequency system. So in order for them to interlink and integrate, we have in al a back-to-back, -back, uh, HVDC back-to-back -back converter station, which converts from 60 to 50 and vice versa, in order to be able to have Saudi Arabia link with the, power, uh, the other Gulf states. Now, this is our strategy that was uh, created. Maybe I can just give you a talk about a little about the history of this. Um, way back in, in 2011, our, our board, uh, once we actually actually inaugurated linking all the member states 
uh, to the grid all together. Uh, the board has then decided to think about where the authority wants should be in the next uh, five to six years. This was discussed way back in 2011, and they thought of that maybe we should start working on a strategy to see how, what we need to do and what we need to, where we need to focus since we got the basics of the interconnection already up and running. So this is pretty much our strategy there, and you can see here where it was in 2012 and where we wanted to be by the end of, well, by 2020, which is basically be the by end of next year. And um, based on that, we then worked on, we hired a consultant uh, to work with us. It's just as basically as a guidance, but it was really the DCCIA people that really worked on the, on the, on the, on the strategy. This was the, the plan that we followed in terms of formulating and implementing the, the strategy. Of course, as you can see here, it starts with a strategic analysis where, uh, as usual, you'd have your, your common SWOT analysis, your PESTOL uh, analysis as well. And uh, this, of course, was done in, a source, in association with, with the consultant. It was a consortium of three companies, uh, um, a business consultant, a, a transmission uh, company from Europe, and I do believe a legal company as well that was involved, but they weren't too much into the, uh, uh, into the strategy. It's just only on the policies that they were involved. And thereby, we then came up and developed our build building blocks where we came up with our vision and mission and core values, which I'll be sharing with you very soon. And based on that, we conducted a three-day intense workshop in Bahrain, a full-day workshop, uh, where we had all people from all levels of the organization, not just executives, we had people from all levels, from the low to the top, from the top to the lowest, getting involved. We had created teams where it was a mix, and everyone came up with their ideas. We identified strategic issues based on the strategic, uh, on the balance scorecard, which I'll be sharing with you. We created statements, and based on those, we then created objectives. I'll explain to you how we did that, and we came up finally with our strategic map showing our actual corporate strategy, which was then implemented from 2014 all the way up to the end of 2019. Now, this is our mission. Um, it was based, so it was actually proposed by uh, one of our junior engineers. Uh, who was quite impressed. Uh, we were all very impressed about what he came up about the statement of interconnecting our world. Uh, very straightforward, interconnecting is what GCA does. There's nothing, it's not real reference to electricity only. Of course, we had anticipated that maybe water grid, the water GC water grid would be involved, the telecom, but so far nothing happened. But anyways, that's what we had, we had purposely left it to, uh, with the meaning of just interconnecting. And our world currently, which is the world of the GCCI, which is not just only the GC region at this point, time being, but for in the future where it may grow up to other, other areas as well. So that's really what the main re uh, um, uh, meaning of our mission there. Our vision, uh, based on three themes, of course, this was all a result of the, uh, the three-day intense workshop that we had way back in 2012, was based on geography, knowledge, and developing an efficient market. And I won't go into detail of those, but I maybe mean, when you look at the slides, you can read them. But our statement really is quite straightforward up to 2020 was to serve the GCC countries and beyond by leading the development of an efficient power market and providing knowledge excellence and power systems integration. Now, of course, being in the, uh, in the Arab world here, our, all of our statements, I mean, our mission, vision, core values, and our strategies have also been translated into Arabic as well, but I'm just sharing with you the English version. These are the strategic issues and themes that I did mention to you just a while ago, um, based on the uh, balanced scorecard. Now, in GCCIA, we, we tend to we purposely can change the word finance, which is a common part of uh, one of the four perspectives into shareholder. And the reason for that is because we wanted to focus mainly on our shareholders and which whom are our six major member states. But they are, it's all mainly financially related in that case. So you can see here the themes uh, as an outcome of the of the intense workshop that we had, we were able to identify the themes, which were based on on questions, as you can see here, on where what are the areas that we needed to focus on and what we needed to do in order to achieve where we wanted to go. And here you can see here become financially independent, which was a major uh, aspect. Influence policy, enable service delivery, foster a culture, attract, retain, develop human capital 
expand service offerings, like expand into other areas of consulting, into telecom business, and of course, very importantly, manage an effective operation. Now, taking those themes, what we did is we then came up and um, we designed strategic statements. Now, we, what we did here is, based on, on the recommendations of the, uh, of the consultants, uh, which are very much uh, experienced in developing strategies, they, they, they give us pretty much a guideline on how to develop it. And we said what we started with the themes, which basically are the issues that were raised and identified in the, in the workshop. And then what we did is we created statements. And what really statements are here are, are just high-level goals which address the specific issues and identify the direction and organization plans for energy for each theme. It, 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 in another way of saying it, it's just a translation of the theme into, into an objective. It's just as a guideline, really, so as you can see here. So from the first example, when we look here, increased value for shareholders, we then create up, came up with a series of direction statements, and increased return investments made by shareholders, which then led to the creation of one of the series of objectives, which is maximize return from all services. And that's the one that you saw in the previous slide there in when we talked about cascading the balance scorecard. The other one, of course, you can see your increased revenue streams, and uh, the statement for that was considering new options to fund future growth, eventually coming up with the final objective, fund future growth plans in electricity trading, telecom, and consultancy. This is really our bread and butter. This is our strategy, as you can see here. It shows here, uh, based on the balance scorecard, and this is to show you about how the importance of the balance scorecard plays in, in, in corporate strategy. I hope you can see this here um, on the slide here. I'm just trying to uh, fix it in here to make sure you can see it all. It starts with the balance, uh, balance scorecard perspectives on the very far left. Then with the issues that we've mentioned that I've identif we've identified. Now, of course, the previous slide, we saw a whole bunch of issues, but we were able then to summarize the most important ones and then come up and identify them as the main issues or themes as we may refer to them. And for each theme, we have created some of the direction statements. And for each statement, we came with a series of objectives. And you can see here we have uh, 20 objectives on the corporate level. As you can see here, uh, I hope um, I'm just trying to go up, uh, scroll up and down so you can be able to see them. But I'm sure in the, we can have this presentation shared for you. You can take a look at them. And this is really what we have used in order then to go and cascade everything down then to the department level. Now, coming down to cascading, uh, this was the methodology that we have used here, and I'm sure this would be very, very of uh, interest to everybody, not only in the utilities industry, in any industry really, is talking about how we actually managed to cascade and, and, and align uh, objectives from a corporate level all the way down to the department or functional level, as we call them in DCIA, and eventually then to the individual level. Now, of course, I won't be talking about the individual level cascading uh, in this presentation. And the reason for that is because we're working on that as you see at the authority. So it's not something we need to talk about right now, but maybe in the future if we are successful. And you can see here, in order to execute the strategy, we need, to, we need a set of departmental objectives that are cascaded, and that would be then derived from the corporate objectives. And in the next slide, you will see how we were able to do that. But if you can look here, see here that we were able to get from the corporate objectives, we were able to cascade down to department objectives. This is just in terms of the mapping of it. But when we come in about how we did it is in this slide here. What we did is we took our strategies. You can, I'm sure you can probably recognize that one from the previous slide here. And we, what we did is we sat with each and every department at ETCIA. Now, what I meant by sitting with each department, it wasn't just with the head of the department. We, we, we asked for everybody, everybody from all the, each and every department to be there because they have to be part of it. They would have to actually contribute to it in order for them to understand and believe in it. Okay. And this, of course, relates to the importance of the communication process in, 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 in an organization. Strategy depends, how it depends on, on, on communication. So what we did here is we, we showed them the corporate strategy. And, of course, this wasn't new to them because they were, they were already part of it in, in when we created it in the brainstorming session, uh, in the three-day brainstorming session. So we told them that this is it. Now, from these objectives, the corporate objectives, what would be then applicable to each department? So, for instance, let's say for the finance department, of course, maximizing returns, they would then go in and take that, and then they would come up and develop, create, 
their own objectives. Of course, they would be the ones that would lead, be the leaders in creating it. We would, uh, the, the consultant was there just as a guider and uh, the strategy implementation office, which was I was part of, was there as well in order to make sure that everything was done in line. And from there, we developed additional objectives, and we also identified other objectives that would be used in order to support other departments' requests. So that would have sometimes, in such cases, we would invite other departments where there would be actual, uh, you know, um, a lot of relation between two departments, such say between systems, operations, and maintenance. They would have a lot of things that would do, they would, they would share, so they would have objectives that would be used that would uh, complement each other. Coming then down to the, once we had all the objectives uh, created, of course, on the corporate level as well, and on the department level, we then aligned, went on to align the KPIs, the measures. Now, as you saw in the previous slide when we were working, talking about the cascading of the balance scorecards, how we were able to cascade down the, the measures, some measures would be slightly different. However, they would complement each other, and some measures would be exactly the same, whether on corporate or department level, they would be considered as what we call uh, drill downs, okay? And um, this is how we did it. Again, very similar to the previous slide. Oops, um, yeah, there we go. Of course, identify the core objectives uh, of the KPIs from the corporate uh, balance scorecard. And there, from there, we would then develop additional objective KPIs and measurements that would supplement or complement those ones as well and identify any other object, uh, KPIs uh, in relation to supporting other departments and thereby moving on to setting targets for those KPIs. So it's, 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 it's very clear on how we were able to align KPIs and objectives from a functional level onto the uh, corporate level and vice versa. And now, of course, for the target setting, um, now on the corporate level, the targets are proposed from DCCIA, like management and concerned personnel, sent to the board for their review and ratification. However, on the department level, it's all done internally, of course, with the approval of the executive management of DCCIA. Uh, the other one here that I thought of sharing with you would be uh, creating of the action plan. Now, of course, once you have your objectives and measures there, you would want to then start preparing for the action plans. In some other cases, you would have initiatives. Now, here's just an example that was provided that we have where it would look, show that we have corporate initiatives and action plans and then corporate action plans as well. I mean, you can have initiatives on a corporate level. You can have initiatives on, on a functional level. It's really depending on each organization. It doesn't have to be all the same. And then you'd have for each initiative, you'd have action plans, or you don't even have to have initiatives. You can just have straight action plans that would support uh, achieving your, your objectives, whether it's on corporate or functional levels. And again, here, we're pretty much the same thing. It's just knowing, identifying uh, which, uh, corporate, which corporate initiatives that, that need to be linked to the uh, action plans in the department level. This, of course, all requires brainstorming uh, meetings with, with all each and every department, identify the actions, agree upon them, and identify who would be responsible to doing them and setting the time frames for each. And that I'll be showing you a live example of that in the slides to come. Now coming here to the corporate and department plans, uh, this is an interesting here. What I would just like to share with you about the time frame. Now this of course is an historical time frame, what we used in the past when we were uh, working on our strategy. Uh, we started, of course, in January 2012 as, in, as instructed by the board, and then in April where we conducted the three-day intense brainstorming session in spring, we then came up with our mission, vision, core values, theme, statements, and the corporate objectives. Uh, now, I've mentioned here corporate objectives were then finalized on August. We did create them in April, but we, were, we then finalized them after several reviews, internal reviews in August, and then we came up with initiatives uh, again in 2013 after we had several workshops and of course the KPIs were then developed at the beginning of 2013 there and then we then of course as mentioned we, we then started off the department plans uh, creation of the department plans uh, way back in uh, September 2013 and that took almost nearly a month and a half when we were able to work with each and every department we have 16 functions at the CIA and by then we then completed them 
had them reviewed and approved by the management, and then we conducted a strategy forum for our board of directors in November of uh, 2013, where each and every we each and every department were presented their plan for the following year. We got approval and their blessings, and starting from January 1st, 2014, is where the official rollout began. And that's where the clock started ticking, where we started measuring all our performances on a quarterly quarterly basis, and reporting, of course, to the board on the end of year year end of every year. Since then, this is our strategy map, but looked in a in a different way. You can see here how they're all interlinked based on the balanced scorecard. And of course, we have we've assigned special colors, which actually helps really in terms of uh, educational purposes, so everybody really would understand. We kind of assigned the dark green for the human capital uh, and knowledge uh, perspective, yellow for the process one, uh, sky blue for the customer base ones, and dark blue for the shareholder or financial perspectives. And here we've got our 20 uh, objectives right there, and then this is how they're all interlinked to each other, eventually feeding up to our vision and mission. Now, this is another example here that I've taken for purposes on how we were able to cascade down and identify and create objectives on a department level. Now, what we did is we took that strategy map that you saw in the previous slide, and when we met with each department, we sent, sat down and we brainstormed and tried to identify which of the corporate objectives would be then applicable for that particular uh, department. So what we did here is we've taken an example from market operations and from based on as a result of the brainstorming session that we had with them. Now this of course took several hours, of course, from discussing and arguing and all sorts of things, but that's really what the whole purpose of it, very educational in essence. Uh, we were identified able to identify here uh, four, one, two, three, four, five corporate objectives that are applicable to them. And from there on we then created uh, department objectives. As you can see here, they're highlighted in, in green. Uh, the first one here under three, number three, the corporate objective, expand the volume of electricity trading within the GCC region. Their functional objective would be make power trade a dependable source of income for GCCIA. Okay? And then, of course, you have the other examples right there. Now, for each of those objectives, there's KPIs and action plans and timeframes created, which I'll show you right now. Um, Expand the volume of trading within the GCC. This is an example of a, of a department plan here. I just kind of summarized it here, and it's so you'll be able to see it very clearly. If I actually had taken the actual one, it would be very difficult to see because it's very com compacted all together in one page, and you won't be able to see it in the presentation. So I just took a part of it and, expand, and enlarged it a bit. As you can see here, uh, the corporate objective here under the customer perspective, expand the volume of trading within the GCC region. The, corporate, the uh, functional objective for the excuse me, for the marketing department was make power trade a dependable source of income for GCCIA, and thereby we identified two measures that would measure the performance on how to achieve that particular functional objective, revenue from electricity trading and utilization of the EMMS system, which is the trading platform system for power trade deals. And uh, there were the targets right there. Uh, some were achieved uh, during that year, some weren't. We were kind of short, but that was the first year, first trial. The other example I've shown here below is in the process perspective, which is continually to enhance collaboration between the GCC utilities and foster best practices. And for the market operations, they were able to identify that as one uh, prosperous objective that they would work with, and thereby they created a functional uh, objective called enhance collaboration through annual forums and meetings on power trade topics. And the uh, the measures for those were the percentage form satisfaction rate and the trading officer meetings conducted in the year. Now, trading officer meetings with, of course, members from the GCC utilities as well, and, uh, and there, you can see the targets right there. Now, for each of those, we went in, we continued on into moving into the initiatives, actions, time frame, and who would be the champion. Now, I just, just give an example here. The champions did vary from one to the other in the department, but I just for just, you know, for example purposes, I just put head of market operations. And you can see here the initiatives conduct hands-on training sessions with member states in order to be able to provide more income as well. 
And these are the actions right here. And this was the time frame. This was, of course, for 2014. And this was the champion, the person involved. The same thing goes on for events on power trade, as I mentioned before. Uh, define the agenda, identify participants. These are the actions and the time frames and the person to be involved. Now, they vary, of course, right here. Now, cascading the, the last topic here, I'll talk about about how we were able to actually cascade uh, the KPIs and how the interlinking of some of the KPIs from corporate to department level and how some of the KPIs from the department level would actually feed up to the corporate level. And these are actual examples that we have here at the authority. You can see here, um, percentage growth in revenue is one of the main corporate KPIs tied in with maximizing returns from investment uh, as a corporate objective. And here we have five different functional KPIs that actually feed into this, that, that actually contribute to that particular KPI. Some may call it as a key result indicator. It, it, it all depends really on how you look at it. But here we have revenue from telecom services and revenue from data. Center, that would be from the responsibility of the telecom function we have at GCIA. Uh, the other one here is revenue from electricity trading. Of course, that would contribute. And then you have from the finance department is total return on cash investments because they are involved in investing in, in mutual funds and bonds and, and all sorts of uh, securities uh, and revenue from other sources. We do have other sources such as we do have our, our building, our headquarters, our permanent headquarters where we do have a lot of empty space where we managed to start renting out leasing out to other companies. Uh, one company actually was the GCC uh, Electrical Lab Testing Labs organization, which is very similar in essence to GCCIA. And they came in and uh, they rented up one, one floor there. But all that actually adds up to uh, the ultimate KPI percentage growth in revenue. Another one here is total optimization and in, in operating expenses. Uh, run here, of course, as I mentioned, is the percentage savings and approved budget. All departments are responsible for that. All departments have that KPI, and they all are responsible for saving money based on their approved budgets. Okay, so it's, you can see how well cascaded that was there from all the way from the corporate level down to the department level. And you can see how, how as you can believe it or not, how, how the effects of this were tremendous. I mean, all departments are very well aware of how, what they need to do and what they need what needs to be done, and they're very, very cautious about it. So they're all um, performance measurement sound, really. I mean, the way they all think, they're all strategically thinking, you know, uh, of what, how, what needs to be done and, and, and how it needs to be done in, in order to achieve the results. Uh, I've got another example here I can share on the process part here. It was a very interesting KPI here, Init number of initiatives taken by GCI to support alignment of regulatory policies and power planning of the GCC. And as you can see here, we have several uh, functional KPIs or from the department level that actually contribute towards this, uh, from the system operations, from the, the technical planning, maintenance, and market operations, as you can see there, right there. Yes, and are you almost done? Because we, I, I want to make sure we have some time yeah. some questions. Yeah, this is uh, my very last slide, I believe. Now, this is coming here to our very last uh, slide here on the review of the webinar. Uh, I hope that maybe that what we've done is the uh, benefits of the balanced scorecard and its role in strategic alignment, uh, cascading strategy through culture and the importance of culture in developing strategy and implementing it. And then, of course, you can see the case study of the strategy development at GCIA and how everything was cascaded from organizational level or corporate level down to department level. Uh, you see an actual uh, samples of corporate and department plans, and then the interlinkages of KPIs. Um, these are the references. I won't go through them, but these are the references of some of the things and information that I will use in this presentation. Uh, a paper I did uh, come up, uh, released a paper uh, late last year, Implementing Strategy and Creating a Corporate Culture at the GCC Interaction Authority, and it was published at uh, the GCC Grid Magazine. Uh, earlier this year, and I hope that uh, EEI will be able then to provide uh, ways of maybe maybe we can share it with people and have it also uh, published in other magazines as well. Uh, this is our website. Feel free to go and take a look at what we have. And thank you all very much for giving me this opportunity and sharing our experience in um, cascading the, our strategy and KPIs all the way down through the organization. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Hassan. Uh, I think we have time for a couple of uh, questions here, so let's let's jump right into it so we don't uh, lose time. I think let's start first of all uh, with the, you talk about culture and you talk about strategy and culture being very key. Uh, one question that comes to mind is does it mean that the process of developing KPIs uh, has to be an adaptive, iterative process as it relates to constantly adjusting either the culture to suit the strategy or the strategy to suit the culture. Can you talk about that process within GCCIA? Well, in, in, in GC, at GCIA, it was kind of like a kind of a both way um, of a process, really. But what we actually did is when we actually implemented certain KPIs, it actually led to creating a certain culture at GCCIA in this case. We didn't really have much resistance at the very beginning because we engaged everybody, uh, mostly everybody at GCCI from all levels into the strategy formulating process. So we actually ended up with a lot of support. No one resisted it, uh, resisted culture, I mean, sorry, the strategy at the first place. But a good example of what we did is when we implemented four KPIs that we, um, that we actually introduced to all departments, one of them was number of fatal injuries, uh, the other one was the percentage savings in, in department uh, approved budget. The other one was uh, abiding by the code of ethics. These three KPIs were applied straight across the board to all departments. And as a result, as a result, we were able to have people think, uh, you know, become, you know, like say, think about how to save enough money not to overspend as, the, as how it happened in the previous, in the previous years. We were able to actually, it's funny to say, nobody actually was, was everybody was cautious not to get into arguments or, or you know, uh, or I wouldn't say fights, but, you know, like uh, disagreements with other people that would lead to complaints going up all the way to the CEO because a KPI was put there. And eventually with any complaints being registered, it would go against them and it would go against their department as well. So in, in, the, in return, they would be affected. And the other one, of course, was fatal injuries, so everybody would abide by the safety rules and regulations. And, and, and really, that really all really contributed on, on how the way people actually acted, behaved, and performed at GCCIA. So it was really more of having, in a GCI case, it really was more of having how the KPIs had more of an effect on, on the culture at GCCIA more than the other way around. Excellent. All right, thanks for that. Uh, moving right along here, there's uh, obviously KPI is very data intensive. So, um, can you talk a little bit about how you view the role of data in terms of uh, KPI development, both now but then looking forward? How are you going to leverage all the data you're collecting uh, to be able to constantly, uh, you know? massage and improve your KPIs? Just talk about data analytics and data usage within GCCIA from that perspective. Okay. Now, for, for each KPI, what we've done is we've created um, a KPI documentation form which describes in detail each, each measure, uh, the purpose of the measure, uh, what, what, to, to which objective it is related to in, in, on a functional level and corporate level, and of course, it shows the target, the threshold. Now, what I mean by the threshold is that, of course, you'd have um, the target where you'd attain, of course, your, your, your maximum points. And if you're short of that target, there's like the amber color. Of course, I'm sure a lot of the performance managers are aware of that. And then, of course, if you're way below that, you get, you're in the red zone where you haven't achieved it at all. Uh, the, 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 in terms of the, uh, the data of who's responsible, like the ownership, uh, of course, that would be showing the concerned department and the concerned person. At the concerned person for each department, we've, not, we've identified them as champions, so they would be responsible for providing all the data. Uh, of course, if there's a formula associated with, with the calculation, the, the, the inputs would be identified for the formula and the actual formula there. And this would be, of course, would be agreed upon uh, with the concerned departments uh, uh, Individually, of course, and if it's on the corporate level, it would be with management and then shared with 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 the board. Uh, another question has to do with culture. Uh, you talked about the organizational structure within GCCIA, the ownership being multiple countries having invested into it. So, 
my guess is that that reflects the staffing as well. Can you talk about how you yeah. how you were able to integrate uh, staff from across multiple countries and what kinds of resistance you got with regards to uh, uh, the creation of this new corporate culture that is data driven and, and KPI driven, given that people were coming from different perspectives or different countries. Can you talk about that, the complexity mm -hmm. of that process, if at all it was difficult, and, and how do you guys resolve some of the challenges you faced? Right. Well, majority majority of people, before we started with the strategy, I mean, the GCIA uh, was really consisting of uh, employees from various parts of the world. I mean, we had people from the Gulf region, the Middle East, the Indian subcontinent, uh, Europe, and uh, some parts even from, from North America for a certain period of time. But when it came to the strategy, what we, what we were really able to do and what we were successful about is that we engaged everybody, regardless of background, of where he was from or she was from, uh, the level that they were in at, organized, at, at, at GTCI, whether they're uh, junior staff or senior staff, we engaged everybody. And that was really the, the, the ultimate um, success point there, the factor that led to our success, that we engaged everybody. And by getting that, you get their buy-in you sell everything right there and they start supporting because they start feeling important. When you get them involved and they start saying, they start feeling that, I mean, start automatically feeling that, um, uh, oh, we are important. So they start contributing and they start actually, you know, taking it very seriously and they start then following up very seriously. Another thing that we did as well, and this started in 20, uh, 2015, late 2015, is we introduced the rewarding scheme program. Uh, this, of course, in collaboration with our board of directors, actually, is where we introduced the, board, the, the rewarding scheme is that for the annual bonuses and the appraise, and the increments would be based all on the performance of the results of the authority. So that was really another thing that really gave in, you know, a great boost to everybody really becoming supportive of the strategy and, and the uh, following up on measures and performance ma management and overall in GCCIA. Okay, we're coming up to the hour here, but I need to just squeeze in two more questions, if you don't mind. Uh, one has to sure. do with the idea of, of cascading uh, the, you know, the whole process, cascading it up and down. And you did say that the vision was created by uh, one of your managers at a, at a lower level, if you may. Uh, can you talk about how has management responded to this process in terms of these KPIs? Uh, what have been their, their reaction to what the KPIs are showing? And, and if that's the case, can you talk a little bit about what kinds of corrective actions may, be, may have been taken in terms of adjusting the process to accommodate the views of management in this, in this, in this process? Okay. What I understand from your question, maybe I can say, is that um, when are you referring to the department objectives and KPIs when they were actually designed from the department level? Exactly, because you're dealing with multiple KPIs, corporate KPIs, departmental right. KPIs, and sometimes you can have a conflict. Right. And so, how has management responded to the fact that uh, what right. the corporate departments want to do might be different from what management wants to do? Right. What we what we did. Prior to, of course, when we first designed it way back in 2013, late 2013, before we presented it to the board, we conducted something called a forum where all the, uh, the objectives and the KPIs that were designed for, on the department level were then presented to management, and not only management, to everybody else at DCCIA in order to ensure that there was no overlapping, there was no duplication in terms of if it's necessary or not. Now, of course, this has nothing to do with the drill down that I've mentioned, like some KPIs will actually drill down all the way from corporate down to, to, to department level, that, that's fine. But that's how we were able to do it. And that forum took nearly almost an entire day, like almost eight to 12, 10 hours in order for us to make sure that we were all in line and that everything was correct. And uh, things that needed to be adjusted uh, were all discussed then. And this is what we usually do on an annual basis, by the way. Our next forum is next week, next Thursday, where for the plans, or 2019 would be then presented to everybody. And uh, of course, uh, a lot of scrutiny would be there, a lot of questions, a lot of some changes might be identified by management and even other people that, uh, you know, audience, uh, people from the authority. We get everybody involved, really, this is what we do. 
Okay, look, in the interest of time, I'll just drop one last question, which is a short one, uh, and, and then I'll turn it back over to Jessica. But the question is, if you were to look back over this whole process, what is the one thing you think you would now do differently in terms of implementing this process? And what would you consider to be the most successful thing that you got right? So basically, what was great and what didn't work well, if you had to do it again? Okay. Um, the first thing that we did great was we communicated it very well. That was the most important thing. And that's the most important thing in any strategy, communication, getting people involved. That was really the ultimate part of success factor. That's what it, really what it is. The other thing that we didn't do wrong is maybe is that, and that is probably something very normal, is that what we learned of, we were able to identify certain objectives that were created way back in 2014. We started with 31 corporate objectives, and now we're down to 15, because we realized that a lot of the corporate objectives that were designed then were not really applicable at the corporate level. They were mainly identified to be at the functional level. So. That was something that if I knew, if we had not, I, sorry, we had knew then, we would probably would have not ended up with so many corporate objectives at that point. That is something I could share up now, but I would like to probably maybe if it's possible to be have that question sent to me by email, I would be more than happy to add a bit more on that. Excellent. Well, again, we need KPIs to measure performance, and I think the industry is headed in the right direction. There are lots of ways to do it. And we've just learned one approach from GCCIA here, and I'm sure others on the phone who've given questions or may not have had the chance to give their questions can still send them in, and we'll make sure we get them over to Hassan and he can respond to those questions. So with that, from my side, I will say thank you to everyone. I'll turn it over to Jessica, who will uh, give a few closing words, and we will adjourn. Jessica? Sure. Thanks, Lawrence. Um, Thank so as mentioned earlier, the webinar has been recorded, and we will post um, the webinar recording on our YouTube channel page. And if you have any questions or want to continue the conversation with us, feel free to email us at international at EEI.org. Uh, so that's a wrap for today's webinar. Hassan, thank you very much, and thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.